Well, welcome to another Wednesday's Word. We're glad you've tuned in, and we pray that today's message will be a blessing and inspiration to you and your walk. Um, we're continuing in the series of on 1 Corinthians entitled Love in Action. Uh, we started that the last time we met, and we'll continue on that. So if you have your Bibles, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Uh, last time we met, we looked at verses 1 through 3. And today we'll be uh, beginning on verse 4. We'll be looking at those characteristics of love. Uh, the Bible lists there in that list from verse 4 to verse 8, it lists 15 descriptions, 15 characteristics of what love really is, that agape love uh, that we should show toward others. Many times we may say, yeah, I'm loving, but... If once we look at this list, we can uh, let ourselves know, are we really loving the way the Bible describes love? And praise the Lord, these 15 characteristics are given to us. Uh, matter of fact, the first two of those characteristics talks about what love does. Then there's eight after that that says what love does not do. And then it lists five more things that love does. So, Two things that love does, eight things that love does not do, and then five things that love does. And so we'll be looking at those uh, at this time. So look in verse 4, and it begins with, love is patient. Love is patient. Uh, that word has to do with suffers long, or endures long, or is long-tempered, or long-suffering. Well, that's what that word in the Greek there is on patience. You know, if you look at any list in the Bible, the first thing that's always listed on the list is, and everything in the scripture is important, but it is most, most important because if you don't do this first thing, then you won't be able to do, I believe, the rest of the 14 things because they hinge on being patient. You know, I gave in that description, long-tempered. You know, another word for your personality or my personality is temperament because the way our temper is has a lot to describe our personality. And uh, again, we should never lose our cool, uh, but a lot of people's temper is pretty short. They don't have much patience. They don't suffer long. Matter of fact, you know, these are some make-believe pieces of dynamite. And so, you know, if I asked you, I said, you know, which one of these would you light in your hand? Well, you'd pick this one because it has a long fuse. Once you light it, it's going to take a long time for this thing to explode. This one right here, you're probably not barely going to get the match on it and it's going to explode because it has a short fuse. It doesn't suffer long. You'll suffer, but it doesn't suffer long because it has a short fuse. And uh, again, I'm not saying that either one of us should explode, but what I'm saying is how long is our fuse? How patient are we with other people that we suffer long for others? And so here, I believe that when you illustrate patience, I think a good illustration is the shock absorbers on your car. You know, if you go down the road, a smooth road, and you don't have any, your shocks are bad or you don't have shocks at all, uh, you probably won't miss those shocks because the road is so smooth you wouldn't really need them as much. But when you go down those rough roads, once the potholes and, and all the bumps and things, you have to have those shock absorbers because when you're in the car driving, you don't want to absorb all of that shock on you. You want the shock absorber to absorb some of those potholes in the road. You know, when we go down the road with people, whether they're friends, relatives, co-workers, spouses, whoever it is, there's some rough roads sometime. And if you've got patience, that's the shock absorber that can absorb a lot of those rough edges, those roughness that you don't like about the other person. You, you can absorb that because you're patient and long-suffering because everybody has faults and difficulties and issues and, and things that may rub us the wrong way, but We've got to patiently endure. We have to let that shock absorber of patience uh, be able to cut those people some slack and be able to uh, endure 
uh, those things that we may not like in another person or may irritate us. You know, when we look at God's love, what a great passage 2 Peter 3, 9 is. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward us, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. God is so patient. He patiently waited for us. Uh, and here he patiently waits for people to come to repentance because it says he's patient toward us. And we know, most of us know Romans 5, 8, but God demonstrates his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He, patient, he was patient with us. We didn't have to straighten up and do right. He died for us while we were yet sinners. And so that patient love was de demonstrated through him. You know, in Matthew 5, 38, Jesus said, You've heard it that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. And it had been said, but it had been said to the courts, not to individuals. And they took eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth, which that's almost the most quoted verse when it comes to verses on movies. They love to quote that, so that... They believe that gives them the right to revenge, but that was given to courts at that time. Eye for an eye, tooth for tooth. Make sure courts give the punishment that fits the crime. They were adopting that into individual lives, and that wasn't what it was ever spoken of in the Old Testament for anyway. But I say to you, do not resist an evil person, but whoever slaps you on the right cheek, turn the other to him also. Hey, that's patient love when you can long suffer that way, when you've been done wrong and you can turn the other cheek. It says, if anyone sues you and takes your shirt, let him take your coat also. Whoever forces you to go one mile, go with him too. Well, what was that? Well, the Romans had a law, you know, that if a Roman soldier, if your Roman soldier was going down the road and carrying that heavy military equipment, if he saw a civilian, you know, a Jewish person walking down the road, he could require them by law to carry his heavy equipment for one mile, but one mile only, and that was it. Well, the Jewish people, they didn't like the Romans. They especially didn't like the Roman soldiers for the most part, and here this Roman soldier would make them carry their heavy equipment for a mile. Well, what would happen is this person that the Bible's talking about would carry it a mile, and then the Roman soldier would start maybe to get it and say, no, no, I'm going to carry it another mile for you. Well, he didn't have to. He went the extra mile. That was patiently enduring somebody that he may have personally not liked, but he was going to do it because he was patiently enduring. It says, give to him that ask and do not turn away from him that wants to borrow. You've heard it said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Well, first of all, they left out something. It really said, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And they wanted to pick who was their neighbor and who wasn't their neighbor. Hey, everybody's our neighbor. We're to love them. And then they added something that never was in Scripture. Hate your enemy. You're not supposed to hate your enemy, but love them. That takes patience. And he goes on to say, But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. You see, that's patiently enduring. People that love us, it doesn't take any patience to love them, but those that don't love us, that takes patience to be able to endure and treat them the way the Lord would want them to be treated. You know, early in the political career of Abraham Lincoln before he became president, there was a man named Stanton, and Stanton had such great contempt and hatred toward Abraham Lincoln. He called him names in public and wrote things that were just awful about him. He, he would call him a low, cunning clown. He nicknamed Lincoln the original gorilla. He spoke about a famous explorer, about this famous African explorer would be foolish to go to Africa looking to capture a gorilla when he could easily find one in Springfield, Illinois. Obviously, he was referring to Lincoln. But you know, Lincoln never responded. He never said anything. He never defended himself. He just let Stanton, Stanton have his way and use such a mean, vindictive language in 
putting down Lincoln. And then one day Lincoln became president and he had to appoint a secretary of war. And you know who he selected? Stanton. And his friend said, well, how on earth did you pick him? You know how he H.N. Talks, talks so bad about you. He said, uh, after looking at his qualifications, he's the best person for the job. You know, one day Lincoln was assassinated and Stanton stood over his casket in tears and said this, there lies the greatest ruler of men the world has ever seen. You see, patience won out there. Lincoln didn't respond. He patiently endured. He showed love. And even his enemy would come to realize this is a great man, the greatest leader the world's ever seen. You see, that's what our patient love can do. You say, well, the person's not appreciating my patient love. Well, you don't do it for what other people see. You do it for obedience to the Lord and see what a difference patient love has in the life of other people. The second thing that's mentioned is love is kind. Love is kind. I guess you could look at patience as the passive love. What love can take, what love can endure. And then you look at kindness, it's the active love. What love will give in actions. So it takes the first one, that attitude of patiently enduring that willingness to patiently endure. And now, what kind deeds can we do? Now, is it just kind deeds to those who love us? You do those. But we also do kind deeds when people are not loving us. People are not responding right to us. We need to be kind. Do kind deeds to them. You know, J. Allen Peterson in the book, Myth, over the green grass, spoke about Dr. Crane. When a woman came into his office for counsel, she said, I just hate him. I want to divorce him. I can't stand him. I just want to get revenge. So I want to divorce him. And Dr. Kane said, well, don't do that. I got a plan. Said, why don't you just go home and be as kind as you can to him? I mean, nice, do everything that you would think he likes and uh, just bend over backwards to uh, do those things that would mean the most to him and, and uh, those kind deeds that you know that he likes and would like from you to be respectful to him and uh, help him and do all those things for him. And then, after you've built him up and showed such great love toward him, then hit him with, I don't love you and... I'm going to divorce you. And that would hurt him the most, and you'd get the most revenge. She said, that's beautiful. I'd have never came up with that on my own. Thank you. So she left, and she went home. And she did all those things for months and months. And after a couple of months, then Dr. Crane said, I had, she hadn't been back to my office. To, and so he contacted her and said, well, I, I thought you were, are you ready for that divorce? And she said, oh, no, no, no. After doing all those things, those kind deeds, I discovered I loved him. You see, that's how it is. If you, you don't wait to do the kind things, you do the kind things and you'll find out your feelings or emotions can begin to catch up with you as you are obedient to the Lord, doing what the Lord asks us to do. You see, that's the kindness that's demonstrated even by God. Romans 2, 4 says, or do, you not, or, or, or do you think lightly of the riches of his kindness and tolerance and patience, not knowing the kindness of God leads you to repentance? See, it talks about that right there, right there about his kindness, tolerance, and patience. That's, that's God, kindness, tolerance, and patience. And then it says, it's the kindness of God that leads a person to repentance. You'd think it'd say, it's the, it's the wrathful hand of God that leads a person to repentance. And sometimes that happens, but even when that happens, we see that God is kind. He has done kind deeds to us. And that should lead us even to repentance. Uh, in 1 Peter 2.2, 2, Like newborn babies, long for the pure milk of the word, so by it you may grow in respect to salvation if 
you have tasted of the kindness of God. Tasted of the kindness of God. You see, we can be kind to those who aren't kind to us because we have Christ's spirit living with us and he was kind to those who, weren't, who, wasn't, who were not kind to him. Are you doing those kind, act, kind acts? Romans 12, 17 through 21. It says, never pay back evil for evil. Respect what is right in the sight of all men. If possible, as far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. Never take your own revenge, beloved, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. But if your enemy's hungry, you think, I know what to do for him. Let him starve. No. But if he's, your enemy's hungry, feed him. And if he's thirsty, you think, I know what I'll do. I'll let him just be more thirsty. No. If he's thirsty, give him a drink. So in doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. Being kind. You know, that passage there talks about when you do those good deeds, those kind deeds to your enemy, it's like putting coals of uh, coals on their head, hot coals on their head. It, it was a sign back then that if somebody was walking around with hot coals on their head, it was a sign of, of shame for them. And that's what will happen in your enemy. When you're doing those kind deeds for you may not see it uh, initially, but the more kind deeds you do, when people are not even doing kind deeds for you or even being mean to you, uh, that can eventually bring them to shame to say, look how good they're treating me when I'm not treating them well at all. And whatever relationship it, you're in, when you're doing what's right and good deeds for those that's doing you wrong, eventually it will make a difference in the hearts of people. You know, I'll close with this. Uh, after World War II, it said that... Uh, you know, when a soldier was going through all the ruins there in London, and he noticed a little boy looking in a donut shop at the pastries. And so he knew he couldn't afford it, so the soldier went in there and bought him some donuts and gave the little boy, said, would you like these donuts? And the little boy said, oh, yes, sir, I sure would. And he just wolfed them down. And the soldier was walking back. It says uh, that he went back to his Jeep, and then he felt a little tug on his coat. And the little boy looked up and said, Mr., are you God? You know, obviously he wasn't God, but to that little boy, he knew kindness came from God. And that's how we overcome evil with good in the way we respond to other people. The love we share, the patient love that we have, and the kindness we have toward other people. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for showing us how to love in this passage. God, we pray for the strength to be able to love patiently and to show those kind deeds, not only to those who love us back, but maybe the times that they're not showing us love at all, that we can demonstrate your love to them. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, praise the Lord. We're glad you joined us. Uh, don't forget about our upcoming um, regather uh, on the 13th of September. Uh, if you're in good health, uh, we're asking you to come on back and regather if you know people that you can call and remind them and encourage them to come on back on the 13th, we'd appreciate that as we all want to be back together uh, again. So uh, we're asking you, if you would, to, to do that. You know, God is good. Uh, he's just been blessing us, and we just look forward to um, all the ways that he'll continue to bless our church as we reach out to our world to love God, love people, and reach our world for him. And I uh, just wanted to send out uh, my love to you and uh, praying for you and just uh, want to reach out to minister any way we can to let us know if you have any needs. And we just praise the Lord that you've joined us tonight and God bless you until we meet again.